be explaining to you how the producer consumer problem works. So I've sent a PPT to the operating systems group. You guys can open it if you want to. Okay, so what is the producer consumer problem? Okay, so in a computer system, we are going to have a producer and a consumer. So let's assume that we have a buffer in between. Now the buffer is going to act as a sort of storage area. Now what the producer does is it produces information. This information is going to be stored in the buffer. So and the consumer will be consuming that information which the producer produces. This, um, it works in the first in first out principle. I think you guys are familiar with that from data structures. I don't remember it. So, uh, so the producer is going to keep producing information no matter what happens. So the problem arises when the buffer becomes full. What does the producer do when the buffer becomes full? And the other problem is, when the buffer becomes empty, what does the consumer consume? So the problem is uh, rectified using um, inter-process communication and uh, semaphores. Semaphores, my colleagues might have explained in previous videos, so I don't think I need to explain what they are. And um, the main principle is, when the buffer becomes full, the producer is supposed to sleep, so that it doesn't you know, put more things into the buffer, it can't, basically. And when the buffer becomes empty, the consumer is supposed to sleep. Now, when the buffer becomes empty, the consumer is supposed to send a sort of message to the producer saying, you need to produce more things, get started on it. Now, that is where the program comes in. This program is actually a flawed solution to this problem. I mean, do you all have the program from the PPT? Okay, so so over here, item count is basically the number of um, items in the buffer. We initialize that as zero because initially that's not going to be anything in the buffer. I actually, uh, Mr. Line over here, this um, sort of begins the block where the, the block for the producer basically. So while true. This statement basically says that this block runs infinitely until a uh, problem arises. That is, the problem with the producer was, what is the problem? The buffer becomes full and the producer can't put anything into it. That was the problem. So what this line says is, this line basically tells the producer to produce an item. That's what this says. And after that, we have an if loop. If item count is equal to buffer size, Item count is the number of items in the buffer. So, if item count is equal to buffer size, buffer size is the, I mean, complete size of the buffer. So, if item count is equal to buffer size, it means that the buffer is full. Now, if the buffer is full, we have another block here that says sleep. So, when the buffer is full, the producer is supposed to sleep. So, that the producer doesn't, you know, produce more items to go into the buffer. Actually, it can't. So, I'm not sure how that works. So, this is the block for the producer. Actually, there's more to the producer block. Okay, so, this logic, I mean, item count is equal to item count plus one. So, when the producer produces an item, the item count inside the buffer is going to increase by one. And this if state, if block, what it does is, if the item count is equal to one, so if there is an item in the buffer, the producer, what it does is it wakes up the consumer so that the consumer can consume that item in the buffer. Okay, so that's actually all in the producer block. Now let's move on to the consumer block. Okay, so this is the block for the consumer. So if the item count is equal to zero, that is, if there is nothing in the buffer, what the consumer is supposed to do is sleep. That is this if block. Because there is nothing for the consumer to consume. And um, this is basically what the consumer does. Remove item from buffer, I mean, it consumes an item from the buffer. That is this line. And uh, when it does remove an item from the buffer, this is what happens. 
item count is equal to item count minus 1, which means an item from the buffer is going to decrease by 1, which is, I mean, what happens when the consumer is going to produce, I mean, consume something. So after this, we have, if item count is equal to buffer size minus 1, what does that mean? It means that the number of items in the buffer has decreased by 1. So when the number of items in the buffer has decreased by 1, the consumer is supposed to tell the producer to wake up and produce an item. So that's what this block says, wake up the producer. I mean, yeah. And Okay, so this is the end of the code. Problem with this code. So, I mean, if you all are looking at the code in the PPT presentation, when the consumer is about to read the item count is equal to zero statement, the consumer is about to go into that if block. So, in that if block, the if block is telling the consumer to go to sleep. At the same time, the producer has, um, producer has, yep, the producer has woken up and has started producing items. So when the producer starts producing things, the producer issues a call to the consumer, trying to wake up the consumer from its sleep. But because the consumer is in an if block and it's about to go to sleep, that wake up call is lost. So when this wake up call is lost, what happens is, the consumer basically goes into an indefinite sleep. Now when the consumer goes into an indefinite sleep, what happens is, I mean, no items are going to be consumed from the buffer. So the producer is going to continue with its, you know, program or whatever. It's going to keep producing items and all those items are going to accumulate in the buffer. The buffer is going to become full and the producer is also going to go to sleep. Now this is where we have a deadlock. And uh, I mean, that's the deadlock slide in that PPT. If you can read that, you probably get a better understanding. And um, the solution for the deadlock is to basically use semaphores. And uh, what the semaphore does is, um, in the previous solution which we had, what was basically happening is that wake up call gets lost. So the semaphores basically are able to retrieve those lost wake up calls. Actually, they don't retrieve them, they basically rectify that problem. And um, we have two semaphores being used. One semaphore is named as uh, fill, and the other is now fill count is the number of items in the buffer that can be read, basically consumed by the producer. I mean the consumer, sorry. And um, empty count is the number of empty spaces in the buffer. Okay, so that's what you need to know. And now the program. So over here what happens is when the producer produces an item, the fill count, the fill count is going to increment by one and the empty count is going to decrement by one. So basically empty count is the number of empty spaces in the buffer. So when the producer produces an item, one empty space is going to be occupied. So that's why empty count is going to be decremented by one. That's what that means. Now the program for this, I mean not, not a program, more like code. So again, this code is the, the PP presentation. You can look at it if you want a better understanding of what I'm doing. Okay, so this is the program block for the producer. So what, I mean again, we have the while through statement. So this block is going to run infinitely until it reaches the problem. So when it reaches the problem, I mean, Repetitions are going to stop. So, item is equal to produce item. So, the producer is going to produce an item. And what happens is, when the producer produces an item, the empty count is going to get decremented by one. What is the empty count again? The number of empty spaces in the buffer. So, that one empty space is going to be occupied by an item. That's why you have this statement. And um, I actually don't know what this line does. So yeah, that's that. And up the fill count. The fill count is the number of readable items in the buffer. So when the producer produces an item, that is going to increment the fill count by one. So I mean, we have a readable item in the buffer. That's why we have this statement over here. Now, in this in this 
code, we actually don't have the wake up producer and the sleep consumer, those lines which we saw in the previous code. Because um, there was actually a problem with the previous code and that problem, I mean, as I said before, has been rectified using this code. Now that was the producer block. Now let's move on to the consumer block. Okay, so this is the code for the consumer block. Okay, so again we have the while true statement is going to run infinitely until it reaches the problem. And then we have down fill count. Now what is the fill count again? Okay. Now the fill count is the number of items in the buffer, readable items in the buffer. So, I mean when the consumer is going to consume an item, that is going to decrement the number of readable items by one. So that's what this line does. And then um, item is equal to remove item from buffer. Okay. And then up the empty count. Now the empty count is the number of number of free spaces basically in the buffer. I mean, I explained it like seven times already now. So when the consumer is going to consume something, that's going to increase the number of empty spaces by one. And that's what this line does. And uh, this is yeah. I actually don't know what this line does either. So. And that this these um, the codes that I've been telling you right now it only works when we have one producer and one consumer. So when we have more than one producer and one consumer, we have other processes that take care of it. So th this was basically a really simple sort of problem. Beyond that, we have like four producers, four consumers, ten producers, ten consumers. We have multiple buffers, extra, extra. And um, yeah, so that was a rather simple explanation of the producer-consumer problem. If any of you have any doubts, you can ask me.